Three, two, one, go. Welcome to Kelly FC TV. Today we're in the home of Matt Riley. Matt, thank you for inviting us to do this interview. No problem. Uh, Matt is one of the three players who played every minute of the 97 Cup run. Matt, when you were a young boy, was it the Cup or the league that you dreamed winning? Lifting when you were thinking ahead of your footballing careers? Yeah, no, that's, that's a good question actually. It's uh, interesting, I think. Memories kind of growing up as a wee boy watching watching the TV and watching um, in particular like Match of the Day. And I can always remember the Cups had a kind of special attraction, especially at the FA Cup. You'd always watch um, the Saturday night when the FA Cup was on, the big English games and the teams going for the Cup. And back then it was it was a really big thing to win that. It's maybe get a wee bit diluted with the European Cup and the Champions League, etc. down south. But growing up here, the, the Cup games always had that, I think, that special attraction. It was something different. So, the league, it's a good question. The league, I think, when you became a player to win a league would be a would be a tremendous thing, but I think in this country it's obviously very difficult to win the league, unless you're at the old firm. Um, obviously, back when we played, it was it was mainly the old firm that would, would win the league. So the cup was a kind of difficult task to win, but realistic. So no, probably probably win the cup would have been a would have been a a goal or a dream back then as a wee boy. The '97 cup run. What do you remember up to the final? Not talking about the actual final, but before, do you have anything stuck out in there? I can remember when I never played particularly well in any game. Um, I can remember this this Sterling game is we get through it again. Never played particularly well. Clyde, I can remember dodgy penalty. Dodgy penalty. It's always a difficult place to go. Um, and again, being a cup tie, you know, there's always a the chance of an upset and the, you know, the smaller teams always kind of raise their game, so I mean, you knew that would be difficult. Um, managed to get through that, again, never played particularly well. I think it was Capo was, a, was the next round. Um, again, another difficult venue to go and play. Um, and I think that day, it was actually a great game. It was a good game. Uh, it was a really good game. So again, to score five goals at Capo was was great and to get through was was fantastic and then the semi-final in D United um, it was always going to be tight, tense and then um, just delighted to get through it. As you say the, the semi-final tied up both wars of attrition, was the team confident of beating the D United before the games? Because they were they were obviously doing better and we were yeah, struggling a wee bit. I, I think the D United were obviously favourites. Um, I, th I think there was a Thinking back to that time at Kilmarnock and, and even just the teams before that, although we were kind of growing as a team and we had some relegation battles and I think that helped us. There was a, a great team spirit um, and there was a great kind of belief in each other. We, we knew we, we probably weren't the most talented guys in Scotland. But we knew we would work hard and one more day we could we could make it difficult for them. So I think there was a quiet confidence and belief that that we could win the game. Um, I can actually remember sitting in the dressing room after we got through, just sitting there, kind of, I think more mentally exhausted than physically, right. and just thinking, you know, it kind of sunk in. I think, can not believe you're actually in a cup final? So we won on the Tuesday night against the United. Did you have your Falkirk scarf on on the Wednesday night for their replay? Do you know, I, I, I think you can look at it two ways. I think it was, you know, playing Celtic in the cup final. Um, you're getting into that game and you're thinking, brilliant, you know, playing one of the old firm in a cup final doesn't get much better. But then you're thinking, Falkirk beat Celtic, we've got a real chance here. Not that we didn't have a chance, obviously if it was Celtic we'd have a chance, but I think playing Falkirk there was an expectation that we would be, be favourites. And I think that brought with it a bit of pressure. So I think, aye, obviously you're, 
you're rooting for Falkirk to win because you think, you know, if Falkirk get through here, we, we, we've got a real, real chance of winning this, which maybe never come round again in my lifetime. So I was obviously surprised, but I hoping that Falkirk would maybe sneak through. The week before the cup final, we had a massive game against Standard Dean. That must have been a major relief to secure Premier League status. Oh, I mean, without a doubt, I think um, I think had we not secured Premier League status, going into the cup final, you'd you'd be going into the game in a bit of a downer. Um, and I think, especially kind of the older players, we realised how important you know staying in the Premier League was for the club and. It was a huge, huge game, um, and a game that we really had to win. And again, you know, I think some of the boys who went through the the pressure of these kind of types of games previous, um, which kind of stood in good stead for the game, and then we had some young boys come in like Burke and Began at the time. Um, but no, that that was a massive game. So I think getting through that game and, and surviving in the Premier League. Allowed us then to go and enjoy the cup final as much as you can, um, because I think there's obviously when you're playing, there's that pressure that you're just so desperate to win, um, that you're just totally concentrated on trying to get a result. They're well, up to the game on a Saturday. Bobby, do you do anything different that week? The Not just normal training, I, or I, I can't recall anything uh, different. To be honest, I can remember it was obviously the end of the season and. We trained on the pitch. Um, I can remember training on the pitch, but there's nothing. There's nothing kind of strikes me that was majorly different. I can remember the night before the game, we got the choice whether to stay in our own, our own house or, or stay in a mm-hmm. hotel. Um, and I, I chose to get an overnight in the hotel. Um, but no, nothing. Nothing jumps out to me that was. Did you feel extra pressure because you were then playing? Falkirk and you come out are now the favourites? Ah, I think they did. I think there, there was that there was that feeling because I I think had it been Celtic you're going into the game, you still put pressure on yourself that you know you want to go and you want to win the game. Um but I think had we lost to Falkirk, then I think after that there would have been a feeling of we'll never get a better no disrespect to Falkirk, but we'll we'll never get a better chance of winning the Scottish Cup again. And probably for the club, you know, but the players that were playing at that time, you know, you're realistic enough to know that, especially back then, I, I didn't come round every year. Was it strange to see your ex-manager and the opposition dug it that day, Mr Totten? I, uh, I, think, I, I think it was, um, but I think, on the other hand, you're so focused on the game in hand that um, you kind of forget but I like there. I, I can remember. I think it was ju- just a wee bit of kind of gamesmanship before. I can remember big Jimmy Stewart at training before it actually saying, "Is it someday?" I, c- I can't remember the story because it was obviously that long ago. But the just of it was that Alec Todd had said that you know they had a really good chance of winning because the only decent player we had at the time was Paul Wright. But I think looking back, it was probably a wee bit of gamesmanship to mm-hmm. to try and get the. The boys kind of riled up for the game, but it was a cup final anyway, so... So the morning of the game, how did you feel? Was it nervousness? I, I think obviously... Confident. Yeah... And that, it never mattered, to be honest, who we played. I always had a, an inner confidence and belief. I went into every game thinking we were going to win. Didn't matter who we could play with Real Madrid, and I would go in thinking... Got you know, to that attitude. We, we're, we're going to win this. It maybe no harm, but no, there was obviously um, nerves, adrenaline. Uh, of course, it was a cup final, excitement, um, uh, and a quiet confidence that we would win the game. What was your biggest memory of the game? Of the, the game. 90 minutes? <sighs> Do you know the ninety minutes? To be honest, is a is a bit of a blur. Well, that was going to be my next question. Did the game fly past, or do you remember it well? Or? Well, it, there was parts of the game flew past. I think there was parts of the second half kind of kind of dragged in. I, I, again, I, I felt first half without being brilliant. I felt we were 
we, we were fairly in control. I think there was periods of the second half we were under the cosh of it. Um, and I can remember thinking we're just not getting it together in terms of how we can play. And I think it was just a case of just trying to grit it out and dig in there and get through the game. And then it was obviously just kind of relief when the, when the whistle went. I can remember, strangely, when the whistle went, I can remember thinking, we can play much better than this. This is not no good enough, you know, we can play much better than this. Maybe that down to pressure of the favourites? Possibly. And then I thought, it was just a, a split second, and I thought, wait a minute here, forget that, we've just won the cup. When the linesman's flag went up for the Falker offside goal, did you then think this could be a day? Uh, I mean, that was a, it was a huge relief uh, when we saw that going up, because I think at that point, um, it was a period of the game where we weren't playing particularly well and they, they were kind of kind of pushing. Um, so that, that was a uh, that was a big moment for us, I think. Yeah, I think it gave us that wee extra bit to just go and dig in and grind it out and get through the through the game. You've touched on it, Lenny, but what was your other feeling when the, the referee blew the final or something? Was it just pure relief? No, I, as I say, I think for that, that split second, I thought, Second half, particularly a wee bit disappointing how we played, and then it was, wait a minute here, we've just won the cup. So it was relief, and then it was just, I think the pressure, um, you probably don't realise it, but with the pressure of the build up to the cup final, and then the pressure before, and then the game itself, I think, you're probably just drained as well. Um, but no, it was, and you can't. You can't really enjoy it, I suppose even as supporters, you know, you you can't enjoy the game because you're too, you're too tense and nerves, you know, are, are kicking in and so when that whistle goes it was just just a relief and brilliant to, to have won the cup. When you look back, do you ever wish the game had been at Hamden and not Ibrox? No, not really, it's, it's not something um, that's ever crossed my mind. I, I think Ibrox is... You know, I think supporters are fairly close to the pitch. Um, I think that's good for the supporters and for the for the players. Ibrox was always a a ground that I enjoyed playing at. Um, for that particular reason, I, I preferred to play at um, Ibrox to Parkhead just because the you know the the, the, crowd, the, the supporters were closer. So no, I, I, no, I never had any regrets that the game was played at Ibrox. No. So your trip back to Kelly, was the party in full flow on the bus? And had you any idea what kind of reception you were going to get? No, no idea um, at all. I think, I, I think I, I'd actually kind of touched on this story with you, um, just before the camera, but I'd get uh, picked for the drug test. It was myself and uh, Tom Brown. Um, so we kind of held the bus up, the team bus was kind of waiting on us for us to provide a urine sample and get drug tested after the game. So obviously we were a bit dehydrated, it was a warm day and um, it took a wee while so by the time we got in the bus there was, there was actually only one seat left but the bus was fairly quiet so, um, so, so I just sat down and I bled onto the guy, the guy next to me and um, happened to be talking about the game, I didn't know who it was and I was, I was telling him I had a big hole in my boots I didn't know what to change my boots because they were comfy and I'd wore them all season so I just played with the, with the boots and then he said to me, oh you could stick it with me, I had to get you a new pair of boots and I said listen, I'm really sorry, I said, who are you? and I said I'm Tom Hunter, and he was Tom Hunter for, for Sports Division at the time he obviously was a sponsor but no, I think the bus was, fair, it was fairly quiet, I think when we got a um, John Finney Street that was just, I think out of everything that's that's the that, highlight. That's, really that's a memory that I love with me forever. That was just incredible. Incredible. Just seeing people up lampposts. It was actually, you know, you had a real lump in your throat. It was really emotional. Um, it was incredible. And finally, has the team ever had a reunion? No, no, never. Um, maybe keep in touch with the odd. The old player, you know, I'm obviously I'm really friendly with, with big Kevin McGowan, so I see Kevin regular. Um, see Monty now and again if I'm ever down at, at the games and obviously in touch with, like, see maybe Dylan. Um, 
keep in touch with Gary Hope through maybe Facebook or whatever, but no, there's never, and Jim McIntyre as well, maybe um, speak to him, and I actually ran into, believe it or not, Paul Wright the other week oh. um, in a supermarket, and then in Glasgow, but no, there's never been a, a team um, get the girls, so that would be nice. Hopefully that'll happen in the 25th when most of the team will come to the dinner band sort of organised. No, I think that would be great. I think it'd be good for the for the players that played that day, um, and it'd be great for the supporters as well. So it's a, it's a great memory, um, and it was brilliant for it's brilliant for for everybody to be part of the the players and and the supporters. It's, it's a great memory. Great memory and a great achievement. Mark, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Doing this interview. Appreciate no it.